Fourth Amendment under the United States Constitution. It provides protection against unreasonable searches and seizures. Unreasonable. What is unreasonable? Well, that's something the courts work out on a case-by-case -case basis and are working it out even today. Our case involves a man who was arrested. He was arrested for what's referred to as a civil contempt, which basically means it would be something like not showing up for jury service. It's a non-indictable offense, meaning he wouldn't be indicted for a felony because it wasn't a felony. Well, he paid the fine and he was on his way. But before that happened, he was arrested. He was arrested, he was hauled down to the local jail, and there, be, during the booking process, he was subjected to a strip search. After that happened, he was then again transferred to the county jail and again subjected to a strip search. He said, wait a second, there's got to be something wrong with this. He consulted with an attorney, and then he said, through his attorney, this is unconstitutional. This is an unreasonable search and seizure. This was a simple civil contempt for which I was being arrested, and gee whiz, I'm being dealt with like a hardened rug criminal of some kind. Anyway, case goes forward. It goes to the U.S. District Court. At the U.S. District Court, the U.S. District Court judge says, hey, I agree with you. I agree with you. This is unreasonable. And he said, therefore, that shouldn't have taken place. It goes up to the Third Circuit Court of Appeals in the U.S. system, and there the judges look at it and say, no, we disagree. We disagree. We find that the procedures in place were reasonable, and the strip searches, both of them, were reasonable. Well, now it's going up to the United States Supreme Court. So what is the point? Well, we've already learned several things. One is that the definition of reasonable is in the eyes of the beholder. It's dependent upon what the person who views this views as reasonable. Now, there are guidelines which exist in a lot of cases that have been settled and cases that have been resolved and decided. But in this instance, that issue hasn't been fully resolved, so the U.S. Supreme Court has agreed to hear it. U.S. Supreme Court doesn't hear every case that's appealed to it, it decides what cases they're going to hear, and they're going to hear this one because of the differences of opinion which exist. So, what do you think? What do you think the U.S. Supreme Court should do in this instance? Your opinion, their opinion, we can see what in fact will take place. So stay tuned. We bring you these cases every week so you understand how the law in the United States is a changing animal. It's something that just moves, that changes. It's something that's subject to those cases that come before the law, come before the judges, and it's something that will not be the same tomorrow as it was today. Hey, I'm David Allen.